Good evening. Welcome to State of Business on our television with me, Kavish Kapareira. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Sri Lanka and India agree to increase cooperation in curbing drug smuggling and human trafficking. Central Bank of Sri Lanka decided to maintain policy rates. News in detail. India and Sri Lanka agreed to increase cooperation in the security and defense spheres in several areas, including regional security, curbing drug smuggling and human trafficking, and training of members of the security forces. These issues were discussed when Indian Defense Secretary Sanjay Mitra called on President Maithri Palasiri Sena, the President's official residence, in Colombo today. The President thanked the Indian government for the cooperation extended to Sri Lanka in security issues and for training provided to Sri Lankan security forces personnel. He also requested to increase the number of personnel trained by India to which the Indian Defence Secretary agreed and pledged to look into the possibility of enhancing training facilities. President Sirisena stressed the importance of close cooperation between the two countries to ensure regional security and the two parties exchanged views on issues pertaining to bilateral defence cooperation and regional security. Sanjay Mitra and Defence Secretary Hemasiri Fernando will continue discussions on these issues to further strengthen security cooperation between the two countries. Secretary to the President of the Arsene Viratna and Indian High Commissioner Taranjit Singh Sandhu were also present during this discussion. <music> President Maitri Palasirisena hosted a special banquet at the President's House on Saturday in honor of the representatives at the International Conference of Asian Political Parties. Approximately 90 participants representing political parties in Asia and Europe were in attendance at this international conference. Launched in Manila, Philippines in September 2000, ICAPP is a forum of political parties of Asia-Oceania countries and is headquartered in Seoul, the Republic of Korea. Its objectives are to promote exchanges and cooperation between political parties with various ideologies, to enhance mutual understanding and trust among Asian countries, to promote Asia's regional cooperation through political parties and to create an environment for sustained peace and shared prosperity in the region. ICAPP founding chairman and former speaker of Philippines Jose de Venisa, Asia Europe Political Forum co chairman Jeffrey Van Orden, and chairman of the organizing committee of ICAPP AEPF, Minister Daya Gamage, and members of ICAPP AEPF, ministers and other distinguished guests attended the dinner. The Monetary Board of the Central Bank at its meeting held today decided to maintain policy interest rates at their current levels. Accordingly, the standing deposit facility rate and the standing lending facility rate of the central bank will remain at 8% and 9% respectively. As per the provincial estimates of the Department of Census and Statistics, the Sri Lankan economy recorded a modest growth of 3.2% during 2018 compared to the revised growth of 3.4% in 2017. The growth in 2018 was largely supported by services activities that expanded by 4.7% and the recovery in agriculture activities which recorded a growth of 4.8%. The growth of industry activities slowed down significantly to 0.9% during 2018, mainly as a result of contraction in construction. As per the available economic indicators and other developments, real GDP growth is expected to improve gradually but remain moderate in 2019 as well. Meanwhile, headline inflation as measured by the year-on-year -year change in both the National Consumer Price Index and the Colombo Consumer Price Index remained below mid-single-digit levels. The recent uptick in inflation was driven by the upward revisions to prices of fuel and certain items in the non-food category. Projections as well as inflation expectations indicate that inflation is likely to remain within the desired range of 4% to 6% in 2019 and beyond with appropriate policy adjustments. The passenger train from Mathura to Beliatha made its maiden journey this morning under the patronage of Minister of Transport and Civil Aviation Arjuna Ranathunga and several other dignitaries. The new railway track was vested with the public under the patronage of Minister of Transport and Civil Aviation Arjuna Ranathunga in accordance with the project-themed Dakunu Lakata Alutmagak. In addition, new railway stations at Piladuva, Verahena, Kakanadura, Bambaranda, Vaurukhannal and Beliatha were also declared open today. In 2005, it was decided that the southern railway track should be extended up to Beliatha and the Transport Ministry had entered an agreement with the Chinese company in 2010 to establish this railway line which is 26.75 kilometres in length. In 2013, the Finance Ministry signed an agreement for a concessionary loan of $278 million US dollars with the Export-Import Bank of China. Minister of Finance Mangala Samarvira, State Minister of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Development Dilip Vedarachi, State Minister of Transport and Civil Aviation Ashok Abe Singha, MPs Nima Siripala de Silva, Chamal Rajapaksha, Mahinda Amarvira and many other dignitaries were passengers during this maiden journey. 
Stadium for more news after this short commercial break. Welcome back. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs will be conducting a mobile consular service in Batiklo district on 10th and 11th April 2019. This mobile consular service conducted by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in coordination with the government agent of Batiklo is scheduled to be held at the Divisional Secretariat of Katankudi on Wednesday 10th April and the Divisional Secretariat of Chenkaladi on Thursday 11th April. Through this mobile service conducted as a part of Rata Venuen Ekatasitima program which is implemented under the direction of President Maitri Palasirisena, the people of the Batiklo district would be able to avail themselves of consular services including attestation of documents, assistance to the families of Sri Lankans who are stranded and detained abroad, registration of births and deaths occurred overseas, and assistance with regard to compensation-related issues. Further contact information of Sri Lanka missions overseas and information pertaining to the services provided by those missions to Sri Lankans living and travelling abroad will also be made available to the public at the mobile service. In addition to the provision of consular services, the mobile service will also feature activities pertaining to the economic diplomacy and public diplomacy programs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Senior Vice President of Golf Ace Hotel Chandra Mohti in an exclusive interview for Biz Talk on our television made the following statement on challenges the hospitality industry faces today. I think the main requirement is identification of our markets. I think the governmental authorities are doing it now, but there have been serrated uh, progress, you know. So we have to know from where would we get our bread and butter and cater to those wants and dislikes. I don't think that is adequate. Then still we have, as I said earlier, resorted to the traditional earning from the tourists. The hotel, beach, elephant ride, back to the hotel, back to the plane. We have not created avenues for them to spend. If we do develop those areas, the spending capacities are there, but there are no avenues to spend at the moment. So, identification of markets, uh, introducing more avenues of spending for it. Spending, in the, this is not extracting money indiscreetly or uh, indiscriminate. This is a man paying uh, in happiness, <laughs> happy to pay because he saw something nice. That kind of thing we have to take. Chandra Murthy also spoke about the need for and the importance of a planned development approach in the industry. There is still a concentration and a belief, the more hotel rooms, the better. I think it will come to a situation that we will have a saturation of hotel rooms without a saturation of guests. Yes. So a planned approach to development based on what markets you are tapping would be more sensible than just, you know. It is only the non, it is only people who are not involved in the business who I have found very often saying, ah, more hotels, yes, that should be a hotel there, they should be. What would be, be, hotels are built in places where there's no attraction at all. And I know some people who have even uh, made mistakes in spending a lot of money and built a hotel, but there's no occupancy because there's nothing there to do. So, a more planned approach to the hospitality industry as a whole and a very indigenously planned approach. You, you can't copy these from another country. They have different attractions, their cultures are different, so a more planned approach would give you bigger benefits. Showers or thunder showers will occur at several places in the Sabaragamua, Central, Southern, Western and Uwa provinces after 2 p.m. and will spread into Eastern province afterwards. Misty conditions can be expected at some places in Western, Sabaragamua and Central provinces during the morning. There may be temporarily localized strong winds during the thunder showers. General public is kindly requested to take adequate precautions to minimize damages caused by lightning activity. On the apparent northward relative motion of the sun, it is going to be directly over the latitudes of Sri Lanka during the 5th to 5th. 15th of April in this year. The nearest areas of Sri Lanka over which the sun is overhead tomorrow are Mahavava, Alaluva, Kadahapola, Uhumia, Uduguma, Kandanuara, Girandru Kote, Allegoda, Galmadda, and Periyani Lavani at approximately 12 11 pm. Stadium for stock updates after this short commercial break. Welcome back. 
Trading at the Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a negative note today. The All Share Price Index dropped 25.90 points to close at 5,595.46. The S&P SL20 dropped 21.39 points to close at 2,721.08. The turnover was 690.4 million rupees and 23.5 million shares were traded. Next up is Forex Rates. Well, that's a wrap of the bulletin for the day. Signing off with the promise for tomorrow at the same time with nothing but the latest. Thank you and good night.